What's the name, man? Huh? Nate. My name's Nate. Yeah. Oh, Kevin. Kevin? Thank you. Thank you. Are you guys like, you guys are Jehovah's Witnesses, right? Yeah. So I'm actually Christian myself. So this is actually really interesting oh, really? that I'm running into you guys. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So I guess what, were you guys born Jehovah Witness, like born into the denomination or were you guys like come to it or how? I had to choose for ourselves. Exactly. Yeah. As growing up, we had to make the decision. All right. Is this going to be Sorry. what? Yeah, no, that's fine. Is this going to be like what? we're going to do for our lives is this what we want to do and seeing the position that the world is in right now yeah, yeah this is the state we want to be in yeah spiritually and literally yeah no i okay so what do you think though? yeah no i completely agree it's uh i grew up learning about the truth about uh about the bible but at the end of the day it's not it's not something that you're born into you have to choose your yeah. parents could teach you about it but at the end of the day, you're going to choose whether you're going to serve God or not. It's everyone has free will, right? So I chose just like he did to, to serve Jehovah. And we just like to, the, like what we're doing right now, we just like to help people. You know, the world's a crazy place, right? Yeah. yeah. A lot of things yeah. are going on and we just want to help, you know, everyone learn more about God and I know about why so yeah. many things are happening in this world right now and the reason I, behind it. You know, it's actually crazy. It's crazy I ran into you guys because that's actually a big thing that I use my platform for mm -hmm. is to speak to people about God, like, you know, the Bible, things like that. And so I think it's really cool that you guys are out here. Although I do disagree with you guys on, um, on your perspective on certain theologies. Like, for example, I think it's very important because you guys don't believe that Jesus Christ is really God, but you guys will believe that maybe he's a God or maybe that's Mormons. I don't know. But do you guys believe that Jesus is God or no? Well, when it comes to like the Trinity, which might be what you're talking about. Yeah. No, we don't believe in Trinity because we've studied thoroughly the Bible and we've come to the conclusion, oh, Jesus is God's son. But, but not God himself. But not God himself. Exactly. Okay. But and we so, still respect yeah. your no yeah no yeah obviously um i think it's good for us to respect each other and stuff like that however i do have to disagree with you guys like biblically because when you look at for example it's hebrews chapter 1 verse 8 it states thy throne O god when referring to jesus christ and that's the father referring to the son so how would you like explain that away well actually i could actually contact with you and Maybe we can set something up. We can yeah, talk we have, later. We when, have information on our yes. website about it. Exactly. Okay. It, it, it is a, a deep topic. It so, is. So, you know, those are things that, to give you a very an accurate answer, exactly. we would like to investigate it. Yes. But we could definitely do that with you guys. Yes. No, that would be cool. But I do want to, like, ask you guys now, like, just, I know, obviously, you guys aren't, like, theologians, and I'm not either by any yeah. means. But I just like whenever you read it, it says, but regarding the son, he says, your throne, God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of his kingdom. And so whenever you read it, like I know we can have interpretation on different things and like whether something's like metaphorical, physical, something like that. But like it's a verse that like plainly states the father telling the son, but to the son, he said, your throne, oh God. And so it's literally saying the son is god from the father and so it's not like another verse where you could take out of context it's a verse like within context quite literally it says thy throne O god and so it makes it very clear in the word of god that jesus is god but also if you also look at uh christophanies within the old testament or the torah we also see in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 it says for god said let us right plurality make man in our image plurality right and the reason why that's important i say plurality is because whenever you look at for example medieval times they use us and our more in a majestic way so it's still referring to one person but it's majestic but the bible was written before medieval times because medieval times came around 10 12th century so that was even after islam so whenever you look at the bible three four thousand years ago when they wrote genesis and it uses us and our it's referring to the one abrahamic god but somehow it still uses us an hour to refer to more than one. And so we believe as Christians, like when we read the Bible, it's referring to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
that's the reason why he uses the terms us and our when referring to one Abrahamic God. And God loved us so much that he created us in his image. That's why, like, we have a body and a soul and a spirit that we believe either goes to heaven or hell. But we also have a body that's just going to stay here. So whether I go to heaven or hell, my soul is going to go to it's either going to go to heaven or hell, even if my body dissolves in the dust or I get cremated, however that is, right? And so it's the same likeness of the image of our God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And no way am I saying I'm God, but we are made in his likeness and his image because we also have a body and a soul, kind of like we see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's like what people say, three and one. So I'm not like three different eights. I'm not two different eights. I'm still one eight. However, at the end of the day, when I pass away, my body will be deceased and my soul is going to go to heaven or hell. And so I think that's a pretty good explanation for the Trinity, because, I mean, I, I, I've talked to different people. Like, I, I mean, I've talked to Muslims. I've talked to Christians, Catholics. I mean, all types of people. And I just think that, like, honestly, we have to put the word of God first. And since you guys believe in the Bible, yeah. that's why I use the Bible. I don't try to use my emotions or anything like that. Yeah. I try to use the Bible, not, no external sources, just the Bible. Like, if we look at the Bible word for word, your throne, God, is forever and ever a subject of righteousness. Well, I, com I commend you for using yes, mm -hmm. the Bible because there's many, there's many people who may say an opinion, and they just base it off of, like you said, their emotion, their thought. But it's commendable that that you, that number one, we're having a conversation and we don't have to argue. We don't have to, we could respect each other's opinion. And I believe that's what we need more of in this world. And uh, I, I appreciate you giving me your opinion based on, you know, I, although we differ in our beliefs, but I respect your opinion. And, and I, like I said, I commend you for using the Bible yeah, in, in your argument thing, yeah. because that's we we also try to do a, the same thing you know you try to use the bible always all our publications that we have right here yes. most of them are in spanish but we also have in english yeah yeah uh, but we we always like to we need to not only like to we need to base ourselves in the bible because at the end of the day what we're doing right here i'm not preaching what i'm saying or what he's saying or what another man is saying is what what the bible says you know what's actually interesting about that and i know you i know obviously you guys believe in the church or the jehovah witness right um however when i've done research into it i think it's interesting you guys should look into it and this is actually something a lot of mormons don't know about when they see it they're like whoa i didn't know that right but when you read uh galatians chapter 1 verse 8 it says be aware if any angel or man comes to you with a different gospel message than this let them be accursed and so when you look at galatians chapter 1 verse 8 it says, be aware if any angel or man comes to you with a different gospel or message. The gospel, according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all throughout the New Testament, even the Old Testament, foreshadowing it, it makes it very clear that the gospel message is that we're saved by grace through faith in Christ and that he is God Almighty that died on the cross three days after resurrected. We see this all throughout John 3. We see this all throughout Mark 16, 16 to 20. Like it's made very clear throughout the word of God who he is, what the true good news is. And so whenever you see, be aware if any angel or man comes to you with a different message, it's interesting because it, it, it made this prophecy hundreds and thousands of years ago before all these false religions came after the word of God was actually revealed unto man. Like I, when, when I say the word of God, obviously it always existed, but I'm talking about actually being written, right? And so for people to actually read it, right? And so whenever you look at it, it makes it clear. And then what happened after the Bible, the New, the New Testament, the gospel, the Angel was written? Seven to nine hundred years after that, the Quran was revealed unto Muhammad through Angel Gabriel. And then after that, Angel Moroni, right? When you look at Mormonism, uh, Joseph Smith received revelation from Angel Moroni. We also have Helena Plavatsky. She received revelation from angels as well. We also see uh, Ben Amni Israel, the founder of Hebrew Israelite, received revelation from angels. And he received specifically Angel Gabriel, just like Muhammad. We also see the founder of uh i think it's i think um i think it's charles says russell right charles says russell he also had divine connection with angels and so when you look at it it's very interesting when you look at all of these religions they somehow have some sort of connection with angelic beings but first corinthians makes it very clear that they're not actually angels but it's actually satan masquerading himself as an angel of light and so whenever you see these 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 false prophets and I don't say that to be offensive, but like according to the word of God, when you say these false prophets, 
they do receive revelation from angels. And I don't think it's not necessarily that maybe they're lying. It's maybe that they got deceived themselves. And so they're receiving revelation from these angels and they're being told these things and they're being told they're, they're selling different gospels. Because I want to tell you what's interesting. When you look at all of these religions that receive revelation from either an angel or from a man, notice how like nine times out of 10, they all believe in Jesus. Muslims, they believe in Jesus. Jehovah Witnesses, they believe in Jesus. Mormons, they believe in Jesus. Hebrew Israelites believe in Jesus, right? Every single one of them. But what do they deny? The two most important things that save you, which is that Jesus Christ is God and that we're saved by grace through faith alone. Mormons, they believe that you're saved by your works. And when you look at like Hebrew Israelites, they reject that Jesus Christ is God and things of that nature. So I think it's really important. Yeah. Um, Okay. If you want, we uh, can. Oh, okay. No, but I'm sorry. I, uh, it's just, it's really interesting because it's like when you guys look at it, it's like the thing that they all have in common, like the Mormons, the Jehovah Witness, the uh, the Muslims, the Hebrew Israelites, you guys all know about Jesus. And that's a great thing. But you guys reject who Jesus truly said he was and who Abraham truly said he was, right? Because according to the word of God, he's God and that we're saved by grace through faith alone. And so again, it's interesting how you guys all believe in Jesus, but you guys all reject the two essential things or one of the essential things that save us. So if you look at, yeah, sure. Go ahead. I could, can you give me like a minute? I could show you yeah. something and I'm completely honest with you. I have a, knowledge of the bible but i don't know that's why i said yeah if we could do it on another occasion or we could do it right now but it's not something that everything i'm gonna know about off the top of my head yeah. but if you want me to show you what we base our beliefs on what we're saying i could show it to you right yeah, now sure. but um <laughs> but anyways you guys are from the area around here uh we're not from my i mean i was born and raised here in miami but i don't yeah. live here anymore so. oh you moved out yeah or two I live in Orlando. Orlando, right? Yeah. A lot of people are moving out. It's yeah, it's expensive, at least for me. So. Yeah, and Miami is, is <laughs> get, becoming a hot spot right now. Yeah, I love Miami, though. I was born here, too. So, <laughs> But I, I, I get why people wouldn't. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's interesting because I do talk to a lot of people like I, I have talked to uh, and like like you guys, for example, you guys talk to people not necessarily to debate with people, but it's more because you care for people, you love them and you want them to come to the truth, which that's why I say I respect you guys for that. However, I do disagree with you guys biblically because according to the word of God, I truly do believe that Jesus Christ is God. He died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and that alone saves us. And so that's why I, I respectfully, I disagree with you guys. Mm -hmm. And I think when we look at the Bible, I think it makes that very clear, you know? Yeah. So, so one of the Bible texts that we base ourselves off of, again, you believe different, we respect it, but I'm just explaining to you our point of view. And which verses, I'm sorry? John 14, 28, where it says, you heard that I said to you, this is Jesus' words, I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I am. So it's more so of a, if he would be the Father, if he would be God, why would he be referring to himself as, I'm going to the Father if he's referring to himself, if he's God? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's actually a really interesting verse because Muslims and Hebrew Israelites also use that same exact verse and so do Mormons. Um, but I think whenever we look at this verse, we must look at the Bible contextually, right? So it's like, for example, if I, if I look at one verse and I take it out of context, for example, um, I'm sure there's like, some, I'm sure there's some verse where the so Father, what's, God. What's the point of view on this? No, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to explain. So I'm sure, like, for example, there's some verse in the Torah where you can take out a context. For example, a lot of Muslims will say um, God instructed um, God instructed the Israelites to go ahead and murder some people, which is like you don't understand the context behind that is because they were an evil nation and things like that. But to answer your question, it's that same exact reasoning is that you're taking it out of context because just because it says that the father is greater than I doesn't mean or denote the fact that he himself is God. Because when we contextualize the word of God all throughout the Old Testament, the Gospels, the New Testament, we do see the fact that Jesus Christ is God. He's proclaiming to be God. 
which is the reason why he was stoned by the Jews, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, why he was crucified and things of that nature is because he proclaimed to be God. He equated himself to God by proclaiming to be the son of God, equating him to God, right? And so whenever you look at this verse, he's saying that the father is greater than I because he's in the flesh. In Philippians chapter two, verses seven to nine, he humbled himself in the likeness of man coming in the flesh, but it doesn't denote his divinity. That shows his humility. And that's the difference between well, Jesus a, Christ. He is, he is a divine. Right. But he's also God, but he's also God because what, that's the difference between Jesus Christ and every other false religion like Islam and all those other false religions is because when you look at Jesus Christ, he loved us so much that he humbled himself coming in the ultimate sacrifice in the flesh to die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, according to Judea law, because that had to happen because they had to, they had to have some sort of sacrifice, but he was the ultimate sacrifice because him being God in the flesh, he did that. That's why you even see a resistance in him whenever you see the Aramaic, he says, El Shabbathani, El Shabbathani, why have you forsaken me? That's just a fulfillment of Psalms 22, verse 1, when he's passing away on the cross, at least his flesh. His divinity didn't die, his flesh died. And so to answer that, that's what I believe about that verse. I just believe that you're misinterpreting the verse. I believe whenever you look at it within context, it doesn't denote the fact that Jesus is God. And that's why I look at scripture holistically, because we do see that Jesus Christ is God. He's just humbling himself in the likeness of man while still maintaining the form of God. Well, I respect your opinion. That's your point of view. I have my point of view and he does as well. Um, but in case you didn't know why we preach, the reason why we preach, whether you believe Jesus is God or I believe Jehovah is God, the point, the reason why we preach is of what, what is stated in Matthew 24, 14, where it says, And this good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the inhabited earth for a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. So why do I mention that? Because all those beliefs aside, one thing that we all have in common is what? None of us want to die, right? None of us want to be suffering. No, no one wants to, their mother to die. No one wants their son to die. No one wants to be hungry. You know how many people are hungry out in the street? No matter what government comes out, each, each president, each government has their pros and their cons. But none of them, because no human being can eliminate death, can eliminate starvation, can eliminate any of the main problems that you and I and him, no matter what we believe in, we all go through, no matter what our beliefs. So why do we preach? We preach basing ourselves in the Bible, which I'm sure there's a lot of things that we also do share in our beliefs. Even though we're mentioning one that we don't, I'm sure there's a lot that we do, right? But yeah, you said the good news, though. And that's why I think, like, okay, so I, like, there's certain Christians, I disagree with them on some things. Like, I'll give you an example. Let's say I believe in uh, Jesus Christ being black, but you believe that he was white and you believe that he was purple. That doesn't make you like, I'm just giving you an example. Yeah. That doesn't make me any less of a Christian or believer than any of you guys. Right. So we're still Christian, regardless if we disagree on like unselfific issues, like minor doctrines. But I believe that Jesus Christ being God and him alone saving us, that's a salvific issue. That's a major issue. And so like whenever you look at the good news, like you just read in the book of John, your purpose is to share the good news. And I agree that is something that's important. But a part of that good news is having the true gospel of Jesus Christ, which is that he's God and that we're saved by grace through faith alone. So by preaching a false gospel, regardless of your intention, I'm not, I know you guys have good intentions. I believe you guys. However, by preaching a false gospel where you reject that he is not, where you don't believe that he's basically God and you reject that he alone saves us, that is a different gospel. And that's not what we were taught. May I add one little thing? One little question. Is your conscious happy with what you've learned throughout your life? your beliefs is your conscious happy yes is it calm perfect yes ours is as well with our beliefs and at the end of the day yeah it all comes down to the bible we love examining it heck if there was no bible there would be no religion at all so it's nice that you go around asking questions asking for opinions and to try and help us in some way to uh, search the truth. And we thank you for that. But on personal notes, our conscience is also very calm and happy. And at the end of the day, like you said, 
you don't want us to like change to our opinions and, and we don't want to offend you and so exactly. we're not going to change our beliefs because it is what i believe in and i'm not going to change what you believe exactly. because that's a misconception some people have that we want to change people's belief we don't but i do i do that's why i talk to people i do yeah. i mean i don't want to force my beliefs upon anybody but i do want to question you that make you think like thought-provoking things yeah. because there's a lot of questions growing up that people are too scared to ask me and like it says in the word of god the word like jesus says the gospel is like a sword so it offends people it pierces the hearts of man and so people may not like the truth but the gospel is just offensive the word of god is offensive and so i may offend people but that's conviction from the holy spirit tugging in their heart it's not that i'm being offensive it's just you receive conviction yeah and so well, I, I love I, I, people I, I, and that's why i share the truth I, I appreciate what you're saying but what i'm trying to say is that i'm respecting your opinion I would like yeah. for you to respect mine and we could cut it out. Yeah. All the, you know. I think that, yeah, our bit has come to a, a long end, but okay. we thank you for what you're doing and we don't want to like keep holding you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much. I just really encourage you guys. Like, this is it. Like, just please pray guys. Like, I don't care, like, don't, not, not like for me or anything or for your friend or your brother. I don't know how you guys are related to each other, but just please on your own individual basis, pray. Cause that's what I did when I wasn't truly a born again Christian. And I was into a lot of other stuff. Like, please pray. Because if you pray to Jesus Christ and you ask him to reveal, are you God? I, he will reveal it to you. Yeah. Well, well thank you. Man. Thank nice you. Your name. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. I appreciate it. Bye guys. Night, bye. Thank you. Alrighty, guys. That was a pretty nice civil discussion. It's nice to talk to people. Um, it's it's nice to talk to people with different opinions. Um, but I just think that, it, you know, at the end of the day, we have to put the word of God first. And we can't be led astray by false doctrines of man, by false gospels. We can't be led away by these things. We must be led by the Holy Spirit of God. Because at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. And when we read the word of God, we don't get Mormonism, we don't get Jehovah Witness, we don't get Hebrew Israelite, we don't get uh, Islam, we don't get Roman Catholicism. And I know that's offensive to many of you guys, but it's out of love why I speak the truth. You get true biblical Christianity. And what that looks like is the fact that Jesus Christ is God. He died on the cross and three days after resurrected for the forgiveness of our sins. When you look at the person who died next to Jesus Christ on the cross, he says, today you will enter paradise with me. What does that mean, guys? It means that he's going to go to paradise because he's saved by grace through faith alone and Christ alone. Jesus Christ did the finished work on the cross and that alone is what saves you. It's not your good works. It's not following some man. It's not following Charles, uh, Charles Taze Russell. It's not following Joseph Smith. That does not save you. All of that leads you to hell and eternal, to eternal damnation, guys. We must accept the true gospel of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, guys. And I'm actually so glad I got to witness today that I was able to speak to those young men because they truly need the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, you know, at the end of the day, guys, whenever you guys look at the gospel, it might be offensive to some people. And I agree with that notion. It is offensive. But I'm, I'm, I mean, as you guys see, I'm not trying to be prideful, but I was speaking with much graciousness. I was trying to be nice. I was trying to be respectful and i was however people will get offended by the truth and that's because the holy spirit is giving them conviction it's not because i'm being rude it's not because i'm being disrespectful it's just because of the fact that what i say is offensive because like jesus said the word of god is offensive and remember they will hate you because they first hated me that's what the word of God says. And you have all of these false doctrines, all of these false gospels. This is why it's okay. Like everyone's like, oh yeah, you can be gay. You can be Muslim. You can be Catholic. You can be all these other false religions. But then second you mention being a born again Christian, then it's like, oh, why are you being hateful? Why, why are you being so rude? It's because you're getting conviction of the Holy Spirit, guys. It's nothing to do with you. So trust me about it. It's nothing to do with you. It's everything to deal with because of the fact that they don't like the word of God because it's an antichrist spirit. That's what it is. It's a very antichrist spirit. But guys, I also want to go ahead and mention, if you guys haven't already, you guys can go ahead and purchase the Make America Born Again merch. I really was not expecting this to be a theological discussion. I'm very excited. I got to speak to them. Hopefully I was able to plant a seed because um, I really hope for them because they seem like they're very sincere in their faith and I'm not knocking that. However, at the end of the day, 
day, no matter how sincere you are in your faith, we must realize at the end of the day that Jesus is God. He died on the cross for the remission of our sins, and that alone saves us. Not following a man, not following specific doctrines, not listening to the Watchtower, not listening to Joseph Smith, Charles C. Russell, none of that saves you guys. At the end of the day, Jesus Christ alone. 